Oh, hello there. I didn't see you sitting there. Welcome to another uh, exciting adventure uh, on Community Forum. So my name is Steve Fredkin. I'll be your host today. And uh, our guest today is, uh, he's, he's an old friend. We've been friends for many years now. And, and uh, uh, he's my, my buddy, Billy. <laughs> Uh, he is, the Register of Deeds is the principal land records office for Norfolk County, and uh, our guest today is the Norfolk County Register of Deeds. His name is William P. O'Donnell. What does a P stand for? Or is that a trade oh, Well, with a name like O'Donnell, Patrick. <laughs> ah, of course, of course. Uh, he took office in 2002, uh, and prior to becoming Register of Deeds, he was 10 years as county commissioner. He was, a, he was a trustee of Norfolk Aggie, the Norfolk County Agricultural High School. He was a member of the Norwood Democratic, he was a member of the Democratic State Committee and the Norwood Democratic Town Committee, former member of the Norwood Planning Board and of uh, Norwood's town meeting. He's a graduate of Boston College Law School, Georgetown University, uh, and uh, we were talking before the show went on, and he's got a lot of things that he's done that aren't on my notes. So uh, welcome to uh, our, our, uh, our show. Well, so Steve, thanks for having me. Thanks uh, for that kind introduction. And, and uh, again, uh, I appreciate having the opportunity to talk about the Registry of Deeds. It's, it's an arm of government many people don't know about, but when you think about it, it, it deals with the biggest asset most of us have are our homes. That's true. They're between the Registry of Deeds and, and the Registry of Probate uh, in Norfolk County, um, almost nobody knows what you guys do. And, uh, no, no, but uh, uh, in, in deference to the register, Pat McDermott, I always tell him, like, when you come to the Registry of Deeds, we're doing good things. You're, you're, put, you're buying a house. Uh, maybe you're paying off a mortgage. You're putting a homestead onto protected property. If you're over in the probate court, you're either getting divorced or dying or dead. And this or, is, uh, I, so I prefer or being to be born. The <laughs> yes, but uh, I prefer to be, uh, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, between the two of you, you uh, handle just about everything that's important to people. Well, uh, when you think about uh, community land records, and, and the Registry of Deeds has been around at least in Norfolk County since 1793. You don't uh, even look that old. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Getting older every day, so <laughs> believe me, I'm still playing hockey on Friday mornings, I feel it. Um, <laughs> But, uh, Probably feel it on Saturday, yeah. <laughs> Sunday. Uh, but uh, you know the, the land records have been around uh, in Norfolk County in 1793. Uh, Governor John Hancock uh, signed a bill. One of the founders of the, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. He was governor when Norfolk County was uh, formed. So th these con community land records that have been recorded. Uh, Stoughton's one of the 28 communities that make up Norfolk County. Um, the community land records are anything from, you know, people, you know, think about their homes, they think about the deed to their home, they think about when they borrowed money, they had a mortgage uh, recorded, or when they pay off a, a mortgage, a discharge gets recorded. But there are other community land records, a lot of the uh, records that come through the uh, local governments, uh, mm -hmm. your Conservation Commission order conditions. You might have gotten a variance from the Board of Appeals that needs to be recorded at the registry. So what we do is, uh, you know, we, we have developed uh, a system, uh, and I like to think our mission is sort of the same as 1793. You want to make sure it's accurate, you, you want to make sure it's done efficiently, uh, but things have changed. Uh, I think we've, we've, we've tried to modernize the operations uh, since I, I became say, I, I know you, one of the, the hallmarks of your, um, your, your, your term so far has been modernizing the uh, Norfolk County Registry of Deeds using uh, state-of-the-art te technology, new computer system, customer service center. Uh, for the first time in Norfolk County's history, the registry is available in people's homes. People can actually go online and, and find their online records and title information. Well, uh, we, we certainly have done a lot. Uh, we, we, you know, when you come into any operation, and you try to draw, you know, you, men you mentioned some of the things I've been involved in. You, you try to draw on, uh, you know, some of your experiences. Yes, I, I, I saw what government did well um, as a town meeting member, as a planning board member. You see, you know, what local government does well. When I went to school down in Washington, D.C., I worked for three years for Joe Moakley, so you'll learn about customer service and public service, and I worked as an assistant district attorney for Bill Delahunt. So you, you kind of learn what government does well. You also see where government maybe should improve. Mm -hmm. I've also worked in the private sector, so you, 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 know, you try to take some of that, those business practices. And it was needed because uh, at the registry, um, and it wasn't that long ago, um, you know, that uh, they didn't have email. Uh, there was some in inefficiencies uh, as far as, uh, you know, backlogs. And I think um, 
you know, I, I know we talked earlier, I, I've, I've played sports, coached sports. Uh, there's no I in team, and I've got to thank the staff because, you know, they really uh, embrace change, and some people, you know, don't embrace change. But mm -hmm. when we got there, we knew things had to change because there was such a paralysis of paper. And some of it was because of the system that was in place uh, and needed to be improved and was in the process of being improved. And some of it, uh, I think, was the tremendous volume of real estate activity when that was you, taking place. When you place. were appointed to office, it was to succeed uh, um, um, the, the, the previous... Uh, yes, uh, uh, Paul Harold, uh, Harold, he was a, a wonderful person. Um, he uh, got sworn in as register in 2001, and in my capacity as county commissioner, we had many conversations uh, because, of the, you know, the budget went through the county commissioner's office about where you know uh, Paul wanted to take the registry, and and uh, I, I always feel that uh, the things I talk about were, you know, the ideas and the thoughts mm -hmm. and uh, of, of Paul Harold. Right. About and we had many conversations about modernizing the registry uh, and uh, where it should go, and uh, I looked at it as uh, my role uh, when I became register was to 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 implement change, and and that's what we did. And and you mentioned the cornerstone was you know, a new computer system that was um, put in place, a new document management system, which allowed, um, when people came in, they now get a, a receipt that tells them what they paid. They get a book and page information that's instantaneous as opposed to the old process where, you know, they would take the document, throw it in a box, and then magically three months later, they'd get some type of a book and page, and, and, and now uh, what we've done is try to streamline things. With the new technology, um, it, it, it allowed us uh, as employees uh, to do improvements. The new technology meant better scanners. So uh, you mentioned, uh, and we'll get into what's online, we're trying to bring uh, the records uh, mm -hmm. into people's homes and businesses. Well, that was done. We got, we, you know, the documents have been scanned in. If you enter book one, page one, the first document from 1793 is viewable. Uh, with advances in technology. I think that was Howie Hansen, wasn't it? <laughs> it's actually a document from Foxborough, believe it or not. <laughs> but uh, no, no. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> the, the um, you know, the, the, the improvements in the technology have also been expanded to the public. Um, you're welcome to come down. We love people to come. It's a beautiful building. It was built in 1903 right across uh, in Denham Square, right across from the Gold Dome Superior Court. Uh, but we have 50 uh, public access terminals sprinkled around the building. We, it, it's not just for lawyers. Good, but the, the parking isn't great, though. Well, actually, the, the, you know, the probate court has since moved over oh, to Canton, yeah. so there actually uh, there has been some improvements made in Denham Square with public parking, as well as the parking behind the registry. Uh, again, with the probate court gone, it's yeah. it's not like it opens used to it be. Up. Yeah, so it it, you, it opens it up. But if people come in, it's not just for lawyers or title examiners or engineers uh, that, that can use those computers. The public can use the mm -hmm. computers. Um, but we're very proud, again, with the advances in technology, that uh, if you go to our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, you can get a lot of information about real estate. Mm -hmm. You can get information if you're a first-time home buyer. Unfortunately, people have been struggling. We actually have a lot of good community uh, groups that will help people who are struggling with foreclosure. And if you go on our website, we have links uh, not only with those groups but with the Attorney General's Office to help people who might be struggling with foreclosure. There's information uh, relative to people dying and, and what maybe should be done uh, as far as uh, title. So there's a lot of good information on that website, but it's also uh, the vehicle with which people can, from their home, look up the information just as if you were at the Registry of Deeds. So uh, you can uh, you know, run the information, as I said. If you went to book one, page one, the first document from 1793 is, is viewable. And it's hard to believe that just a decade ago, we, our Registry of Deeds, which has got to encompass thousands and thousands and thousands of important records, was not on computer. It, it, what's even, I mean, in, I became registered in 2002, they, they didn't have email. That wasn't that long, long yeah. ago. So to put the system in place, and, you know, certainly, I mean, on, on some levels, and again, I'm a big believer in, in modernization, we still do some things the old-fashioned way. We still print books. We're one of the few registries that still print books here mm -hmm. in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the 21 registry districts. So a lot of people feel more comfortable. They want to come in and do it the old-fashioned way with the books and the indexes. 
but you know the times were changing and our economy and, and our society has got so much more fast paced I so assume the books are not handwritten anymore though no no and, and uh, although it's we are now uh, one of the projects we're doing is transcribing uh, and, and in due time what's going to happen is when you view these documents they're, they're handwritten mm -hmm. Uh, on the computer, we're, we're, we're now trying to transcribe them. So if you hit another icon, which will be a typed version, a typed version of that handwritten document, we're, we're trying to do. And it's, it's been a big project. Uh, the register in 1900 started to do it. That's when they went to the typewriter in 1900. Mm -hmm. And he started going backwards and stopped. I'm starting to see why he probably did stop. stop. It's a big undertaking. It's a tedious job. <laughs> it's a tedious yeah, job. Yeah, the entry is no fun. <laughs> and, we're, and we're working on it. But uh, again, um, it, it's just trying to use the technologies in place. So if, if you come to the, if you go at, at your home, if you enter that website, you go to online research, you can look up your information. You can, uh, you know, run your name and see, you know, look, view your deed, see if your mortgages have been paid off. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you periodically check our website or if you want to sign up to be on our newsletter, we have uh, computer seminars. We just had one a couple of weeks ago where we open up the registry at, uh, at 430 and we do a class about how to use uh, the, um, the, the, the computer and what to look for and you know, we have links to the assessing department. So there's a lot of information out there to, to kind of respond to how fast-paced so society so not is. Not like you throw people into a room full of machines and say you're on your own. No, no um, and, 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 and that's a good point to make, Steve, because uh, you know, my, my, my dad uh, climbed poles for the Boston Edison for 38 years. He was a member of Local 369. So when you're telling them what you're doing as far as modernizing the registry and making improvements, I, I always remember uh, what he said to me. He goes, remember, some of us don't know anything about computers, don't care to know anything about computers, don't want to know anything about computers. So we do have a customer service center um, that we, we uh, initiated and started. Uh, and we have uh, staff and, and computers in there with the staff if you come in and, and need a copy of a deed or want to know if you have a homestead recorded, they'll look up the information and help you out. So there are people there that, that will, you can talk to, anybody you can call up and, and get information or advice on? Uh, yes. Well, uh, again, we, we, we run a fine line. We, we're not supposed to give out legal advice. We probably get right, dangerously but close, but we help. help. Out exactly. And if the, our direct uh, customer service number is 781-461-6101, mm -hmm. and uh, the customer service uh, people will, will uh, help people out. And, and, it, and it's working. Uh, in our building on the second floor is the... Uh, the jury pool where jurors come before they go over to Superior Court or the District Court and people will come down and say, I've been meaning to come here for a long time to get a copy of something. It only took a couple of minutes. And, and so, uh, it, it, so even though we're doing the, this modernization, mm -hmm. um, we, we still, again, drawing on my experiences, uh, especially working for Congressman Moakley, you know, the, 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 the dedication that you have to take to customer service. We, we, we want to make sure people who aren't as skilled with the computers also get help. And sometimes you can be real skilled with the computer, but you don't know what you're looking for. So, uh, you know, uh, that's where customer service it, it helps. It always amazes me. Well, it shouldn't really. That, that sometimes I'll ask somebody for their email address, and I'll say, email? I don't have a computer. You know, yeah. and, and you realize that it, we're still in a transition. It, it, I mean, I'm, look, my, my telephone, my cell phone, is not only not a smartphone, it's developmentally challenged. <laughs> it, uh, I mean, it makes phone calls and tells me what time it is. Uh, and, and things have, have changed. As, as, as proud of, uh, as we are of, of some of these accomplishments that we started initiating uh, in 2003 and 2004, you know, here we are. Uh, uh, not that long ago, we also implemented electronic recording, something that wasn't even thought of back in, in 2002 when I became Register of Deeds. Electronic recording, uh, it, we, we've put a system in place where um, a, an attorney here in Stoughton or down in Bellingham could be doing their closing at their office. They go online, they can check to see, you know, if there's any liens, and then they transmit the documents, which has been okayed by the state legislature, it's been allowed uh, and, and passed into law. They transmit it over the internet. So we are electronically recording documents uh, so people don't have to come to the registry. So uh, we, uh, a lot of the, the, the bar associations, the Mass Real Estate Bar Association we worked with. Um, they must be thrilled. Well, uh, and you'd be surprised. There are lawyers, now we, we have our office in Dedham, there are lawyers in Norwood and Dedham 
that record electronically, and, I, I, and they say it just, it's just a lot easier to do of it from course. their office, and that way the original documents they can keep, they can get it to their clients, the bank, sooner. So, so here's another you know, a way things are changing, electronic recording, and uh, we're working with the land court to allow for us to electronically record on the land court side, which is 20% of Norfolk County's land. But out of the 80% uh, of the land in Norfolk County is on the re recorded side. And since we've put in electronic recording, probably 21% uh, of the documents are coming in via electronic recording, which you know, wasn't even in existence back in 2002 at the Norfolk uh, Registry of Deeds. Back in the days when the economy was in a shambles, every time I saw you, I would ask you, How's, how are things going at, 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 in, in the deeds registry? Uh, because I always figured that if, if the registry of deeds was active, then things were happening in the, in the housing market and that was good for the, the economy. How are things happening in the, in the registry of deeds? We've seen the best of times, we've seen the worst of times, and right now I think it's a little up and a little down, mm -hmm. and a little up, it kind of limps along the last few years. Um, Certainly we're not at the levels we were in 2003 in Norfolk County, we recorded uh, 330,000 documents. In 2004, 325,000 documents. There was tremendous economic activity. Um, there were a lot of sales, there was a lot of refinancing, and uh, things were booming. Um, and, and again, that was one of the things that motivated me to put this new system in because there was just a paralysis of paper. It was, it was just uh, a lot of paper and you had to move it and, and thank God we put that system in. Um, then we had to hit the downturn and unfortunately the, the documents you saw being recorded were, were, were notices of foreclosure and, and foreclosure deeds because of, of, of people having troubles and again I would urge them there are still foreclosures going on even if you have one foreclosure it's probably one too many as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. Avail yourselves uh, early in the process. A lot of times people don't want to seek help. Uh, they, they, it, may, it may not be something they want to broadcast but if you go on our, on, on our website uh, there are groups, and these groups do not charge. They, they're, they're, um, they're great uh, community-based organizations like N Neighborhood uh, Works of Southern Massachusetts um, that, that will give you counseling and services for free. Um, so uh, when you say the activity, we're not as bad as we were in 2007, 2008. But it's sort of an up and down. Um, this spring, there seems to be a lot more uh, purchase and sales taking place. Certainly the deeds excise money that comes in, which is reflective of sales, is higher. But there's less refinancing, notwithstanding the rates are still low. Most people have already refinanced. Is the price of real estate going up? It, it seems to be. Uh, and, but you don't know whether it's, 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 is it a function of what we're seeing, or as the brokers tell me, there's less inventory here. Um, for sales. So you might have four or five people competing for one property. So is that price going up because it's reflective of price or is it because, you know, w you know which I guess well, I understand it's five people. Well, shortage yeah. of inventory. And, and that a lot I think of people is, aren't yeah. selling their homes. Right, and that's what's driving um, uh, the prices up in, 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 in places. So we've seen an increase in the deeds excise. Um, you know, uh, as far as yearly volume, a couple of years ago it was 200,000. Last year it was 175,000 documents being recorded. So mm -hmm. we're still not where we were in 2003, 2004. But um, I think the refinancing activity a couple of years ago carried the statistics, but uh, there's no refinancing right now. And there's not as much inventory. So hopefully it's improving, it seems to be improving, but. Um, it just seems like the last few years, it's just been kind of limping along. Where, where does your registry get its funding? We, we get our funding um, uh, through a, a county budget. Uh, we're, we're, a, we're a county organization. One of the few uh, left. Uh, yes, yes. Um, and, and I think it, it's worked well. In, in fact, uh, you know, as I said, uh, our, myself, Plymouth County, Bonsville County, you know, we're back to year one with our documents, you know, our first year of existence. Some of the other registries aren't, mm -hmm. and I think part of it is I'm a firm believer in the, the closer you are to the locality, the more efficient things are. And so it's worked well being mm -hmm. closer when, when we have these projects. Uh, as I said, these modernization efforts just don't happen. I, I think it helps to be closer to the, the, the locality. Uh, most of the money, 90% of the money that we collect at the registry <coughs> goes to the state. So uh, the monies that, that go to the state, 
uh, when you pay the filing fees, they're set by the state legislature, um, we send a, a check to the Department of Revenue. Those are the monies that are used for uh, local uh, aid. Those are the monies that are used for uh, public safety or, or school uh, issues or, or social services. So we, we send- Some of the county departments that we the state has taken over. Uh, yes, yes. We, a lot we, of people uh, are not aware of the fact that the district attorney, for example, is not a county office. <laughs> the register of probate is not a county office. The sheriff is not a county office. Even though their the districts are in Norfolk County, they are state organizations. Right, and, and, and so so the funding, you know, when they talk about, you know, statewide collections and things, one of the collection points they're looking at is the monies that the registries uh, are turning over through the filing fees that are established by the state legislature. Now, if, if your funding is going to the state, who's funding the county? Well, a portion of, of our a portion of our uh, funding goes to the county, and we, we have to operate uh, within the budget. Um, but that percentage hasn't increased in, in, since you know a long, long time in the mm -hmm. '80s. I, I I would compliment the uh, state legislature. They they did a vote uh, a, a fee uh, on the documents that helps with a lot of the modernization that that's dedicated for the registry to to to, to run the operation, which also uh, helps to. To, to you know, put these projects together. Now, a lot of county money is is dependent on real estate transactions. Am I correct? Uh, well, yeah, the trans it's based on transaction fees as well as uh, the value of the property, deeds excise. So, mm -hmm. so you know, clearly, when when the activity isn't good, it's you have to run it. Like, you know, I try to draw on. A, I, I have a lot of government experience, but I also you know was a, a practicing attorney, ran a, a business. Yeah. So. Uh, that's one of the approaches I've tried to take is you've got to run a government agency like a business and I don't view it as mutually exclusive and, mm -hmm. and so you have to live within a budget. You have to anticipate things aren't always going to be as good. Unlike, unlike a business, you can't spin off unprofitable activities. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, uh, well, very much so, but, you know, hey, as long as we're doing a good job, uh, and, and, and uh, that's what you also take from the private sector. You know, you're not going to be in business long. You're not going to uh, be in the, pr you know, doing what you did. Uh, you know, uh, if, you're in, if you don't provide good service and, and uh, efficient service and, uh, and also think ahead, you know, when I, uh, another aspect of thinking ahead uh, that comes to mind when I first became registered of deeds, um, and, and this person was retiring, and I said, w what do you do for backing up any of this information? And he reached into his drawer and says, it's all in there. Well, you know, that's changed. We applied business practices uh, mm -hmm. that, that you learn, and, and we put a disaster recovery plan into place and a business continuity plan um, so that... Uh, yes, um, we still do some things the old-fashioned way. We print books. Mm -hmm. So your records are protected because we print books. But look at in New Orleans when they had the flood. All, all those books are gone. Well, we still microfilm. By law, we have to microfilm. That's sent to uh, uh, Iron Mountain in New York. But with all the computerization, we do tape drive backups daily and weekly, and those get sent to a renovated nuclear bunker in uh, Rhode Island. Uh -huh. So again, the documents are, are protected. They're not into the cloud yet. Uh, that that's the next thing they're talking. Actually, the IT people. That's the next thing they're they're, they're talking about. But uh, but you know, uh, sometimes government still has to move slowly too. Um, sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, probably uh, more often than not. But as as uh, other parts of uh, disaster recovery and thinking ahead, we were the first registry a couple of years ago. We put a a, a generator in. Mm -hmm. So uh, all these snowstorms and it was a pretty bad winter. We never shut down. Um, you know, we stayed open. I bet your employees were thrilled with that. Well, <laughs> being a good boss, I did send everybody, you know, you know you <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I brought that up at a, at a thing. I did send people home. We just, all we need is a few people there to make sure that if people... Well, if anybody's it, selling a house in the middle of a snowstorm. Well, you <laughs> left the last snowstorm where every government building was closed down. Uh, a lawyer came in with, uh, they had a closing, and, and, and she said, thank God you're open. This had a close today, you know, mm -hmm. and... Uh, and so anyway, um, that's one of the reasons we did, we did the generator. And as part of our disaster recovery, so people know, um, and it took a while, but we have a little office at, like, with a turnkey operation so that if something happens at 649 High Street, maybe it's a fire or a flood, we can't get into that building. We have a, a, another office where uh, equipment is set up so at least we can start recording documents. It's certainly gonna be a struggle, mm -hmm. but at least um, we can uh, virtually 
in a timely manner get an operation up and running so that people can close on their loans and, and, and close on their houses. Makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, it certainly uh, seems like a, a vital operation. Well, it, it's, you is know, the, it's the part state? of the economy people don't really think about, but, you know, if, if businesses could, you know, and we're talking, you know, look at Norfolk County, there's a lot of commercial businesses, you know, mm -hmm. Patriot Place. If you couldn't rely on the real estate records, you know, uh, who's going to So it's not just homes that you're dealing no, with. Oh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's com you know, a, a lot of commercial real estate as well, you know, whether it's in, in Quincy, you know, or as I mentioned in Foxborough. Yeah, every, every uh, land record, whether it's residential or commercial, um, it gets dealt with uh, and, and gets recorded at the Norfolk Registry of Deeds if it's in Norfolk County. Mm -hmm. Now, you, do you deal with the courts at all? Do you have to go into court as a, as a, as register? Incidentally, a lot of people think it's registrar. <laughs> it's not registrar, it's register. In, uh, again, uh, in Norfolk County since 1793, it's been register as well as, uh, you know, um, my, my fellow register, John Buckley, in, in uh, Plymouth County, and he, uh, Plymouth is, he calls it the first registry of deeds, mm -hmm. America's first registry of deeds, and it, it was registered back then when, <laughs> when, uh, when the pilgrims came. So, uh, uh, but that's what it is. It, it is register. No, we, we um, I mean, uh, we haven't really dealt with, we don't really deal, deal we intersect with the courts in one way. Uh, and and uh, I got to tip my hat to Pat McDermott, the register of probate, um, who actually worked at the Registry of Deeds for, yes, for a while. Um, he worked when, 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 yeah, when they went, when, when, when they went over to Canton, we knew how important it was. It's to have a computer, and we fought to get f through the trial court to make sure a computer is there so that people could check on it. They don't have to keep driving to Canton, mm -hmm. um, so they can check on the estates and they can run it. They, you know, they'll still have to go to Canton to be extra thorough, but um, that's, that's probably one direct intersection with the trial court we have, is that the title examiners and the lawyers that are doing research want to make sure there are no divorces or uh, no one died or if someone died, how did the property get transferred, did it do, did, you know, was it done right? So, um, you know, that's, that's uh, uh, you know, one way uh, that we've dealt with the, uh, the trial courts. Uh, but but it, it makes me think of, um, and maybe I draw on my experiences in, in the district attorney's office, sometimes you see what people uh, do to other people and uh, one of the things that you're making me think of courts and you're making me think of, you know, things that aren't done right. Mm -hmm. And we have people that like to scam people in Norfolk County and I think it's important to, to point that out to people um, with respect to, to, to registry issues. Uh, first of all, there's a group out there for $15, they solicit people, they'll get you a copy, uh, they'll get you a homestead form. And we'll get later into what the homestead is. It's a way to protect your property. It's a great consumer protection. But don't pay $15 to a group that's just going to give you a blank form. If you go on our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, you can download the form free. Uh, as a matter that's of fact, that's a lot cheaper than fifteen. It, it, it is, and uh, as a matter of fact, we we have a lot of the forms in our green folders that we have at the various senior centers and in, in, in town halls. Um, another scam that that's been taking place. Um, is uh, there was a group for sixty dollars? They were soliciting again and still soliciting uh, Norfolk County residents that they'll get you a certified copy of your deed. Mm -hmm. um, if you come directly to the registry of deeds, uh, you, at most it would cost you two dollars if you need a certified copy of your deed. Um, again, some people. Uh, is there a long wait for that? For certified card, no. If you go to that customer service center, we can do it. We just stamp it and sign it right away. I just came from an office hours in Holbrook. We, in, in the beauty of the computer, we can tie into our records. We print it, and uh, I certify it right there for the, the 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 you know the resident that needed that done. So it doesn't take that long. But don't pay sixty dollars. To, to go to the registry for something in that your, costs In two. your notes to me, you had said $84. Well, I, I'm bringing that, that, that comes to my second, the second point. The old scam was for $60, and I'll, I'll, at least they would send you a certified copy. They would come directly to the registry and pay us $2 after they took you for 60 
There's a new group, and, and I think the residents of Norfolk County uh, should be aware of it. And we've, you know, written to the Attorney General's office, and, and again, I, I recognize their position. Uh, you know, some of this, uh, well, I guess, she's is too legal. Busy running for governor. <laughs> <laughs> some of this may be legal. I, I, I but I just think they they're. I think it's outrageous when they, they, they scam consumers. The new scam is they send out a bill. It, it almost looks like a bill, and it says document transaction fee, $83. And people think it's a bill. And they're sending the check to this outfit. And they don't even provide you a certified copy. They just say they'll get you a copy, you know? So they don't even provide it certified. And it's, it's, it, it, it bothers me. I've, uh, it's been broadcast. I know. Um, on these deed scams, various media, media outlets have picked up on it. Um, Channel 4 did a story, Boston Herald uh, picked up on it, the Brockton Enterprise on the recent scam. And because what happened on the recent scam, I got stopped by a local attorney in Dedham saying, I had a client come in just, you know, just yelling at me that I had missed this transaction fee. And she had the check all written out to be sent to this outfit in uh, South Dakota. And uh, she just wanted to give me a peace of mind, the attorney, that he mm -hmm. had missed something. And he made her tear it up, but he had got the information, showed me the letter, and that's what I sent to the attorney general's office. So, they, uh, you know, and some of these people are elderly. They're taking advantage. They, they get something. It looks like an official bill, and they're just sending it off. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, you know, just, you know, if, if you need and a that, copy... That, that type of scam is not limited to your particular niche either. There are scams like that across the business spectrum. Exactly. I mean, and I, I, I get, you know, you're right. I mean, uh, a lot of the, the, you know, the Stoughton police does a nice job explaining and, course, and getting yeah. out there, telling the elderly. I know there's a lot, I'm at the senior centers a lot, and there's a lot of interaction with the local police, you know, telling the seniors what to do. And I'm using our media here to say, yes, not just affecting the registry, it's everywhere. But in particular, I, I, I know of these uh, scams, and people should be aware of it. There are a lot of people who sincerely believe that if your email address has .gov at the end of it, you're no good. That if you, if you work for the government, you, you have no skills, you have no capability, the government can't do anything right. But you and I both know that that's not true. Well, you know. I mean, we both know many people who are actively involved in government service that provide legitimate, genuine, uh, and, and, and very competent services to the public. I, I always felt that way. I know, you know, um, you know, government, and especially at the national level, there certainly can be improvements, but I look at, you know, when I worked in the district attorney's office, you know, it was the best job I ever had, you know, except at the first of the month with the mortgage was yeah, due, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> now that I have kids in college. Um, but you did, you know, you, you learned the value that, you know, government can do a good job, and I've tried to take those practices uh, at, at the Registry of Deeds, is, is try to make it efficient, but also if you, you, you know, we do a, we do a lot of outreach. Uh, yesterday I, I was at a senior center, you know, we, we, we do a little talk, we look up documents, and people have a lot of questions, you know, questions about, uh, the discharges or questions about homesteads that we can talk about. So, um, you know, I, I think government can do good, and that's what that's what we're trying to do at the registry. And there's always uh, room for improvement. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, if people want to e email, uh, it's registrodonnell at norfolkdeeds.org, uh, and, uh, and, you know, we're always trying to get feedback and improve our operation, that's for sure. And they can volunteer for your campaign committee, too. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, there are, there are counties in Massachusetts that aren't counties anymore. And uh, because of fiscal problems or whatever, whatever the reason was, the state shut them down. Um, what do those counties do for their registers of deeds? Those, um, uh, there, are tw um, there, there are 21 registry districts, and what they do is they get funding from the general court. They're, each registry gets a line item of funding uh, from, the, from, the, from the general court to, to operate. And, and general uh, court is the state legislature. I'm sorry, the state yes. legislature. That's okay. no, no, no. And the governor has to sign the budget. A lot of people call and it state congress. Yeah, yeah, Secretary of State Galvin, who, you know, our office, we, we, we work together. Uh, um, all the, the Registers Association works together to, on issues such as indexing. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've, done, we've gotten legislation passed. For instance, there was a law, uh, a, a case law that went into effect that said that uh, a document that gets received, although not recorded by the registry, goes ahead of those that, that were recorded. We got that law changed because we, we saw it as a, uh, it hurt the consumer, it hurt the validity of the title. 
there's been a lot of issues with the banking community and i would urge your, the people out there to contact your state legislators the registers association filed a bill that said on residential property if there's been an assignment of that mortgage it should be recorded within 30 days and that has been fought by a lot of the big banks and MERS and, and not done. Well, but they sell mortgages back and forth like trading cards. Uh, they do, and, and, and what they do, they can do. We're not trying to put anyone out of business, but mm -hmm. I think the consumer should know when their mortgage gets assigned. With everything online, we're not saying uh, that, the, the, that they sh maybe they should be notified by mail or certified mail. We're not even putting that in our statute. I think if you require a bank to record an assignment so that people know, they can go online and look it up and I, I think I think consumers should know mm -hmm. you know if they're well there, there could come a, a situation where your mortgage has been sold to another bank and you're trying to sell your house and you can't find the mortgage and we have on our website a document and that we hand out that says where has my bank gone because it speaks to an issue of discharges which is another kind of consumer uh, issue. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you borrow money, you sign a mortgage with your lender and uh, you sign a note and the mortgage gets recorded at the registry to, to, so the bank can make sure they get paid. Now, when that lender uh, assigns it, sometimes these banks, uh, you know, it was assigned a bunch of times and they never recorded assignments. Well, suddenly you need to get a discharge. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's happening more with older mortgages where you know, people are buying, uh, selling their house and the bank attorney says, you know, this mortgage, uh, well, I paid that off 20 years ago. Well, there's no discharge. Thus our document, where has my bank gone? There are federal websites and state websites where you can kind of track where your bank has gone because some of the local banks that I remembered growing up in Norwood, Union Warren, you know, they've, they've merged and, and you got to chase it. I'm a big believer in community banking. And you got you know community banking here in Stoughton. Mm -hmm. If you need to get a discharge, I'm sure your local community bank will look up the information. And if you needed a discharge, which is usually a one or a two page document that tells the world that you paid that mortgage off, it has to be recorded at the registry. A lot of times uh, the banks or the lenders, they might have said they recorded it at the registry and they didn't. And in fairness to some of the banks, sometimes they sent it to the consumer, but they didn't make clear to the consumer that that discharge needed to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Mm -hmm. So again, it, it, it's, it's a small issue, but it's an issue you might want to take a look at. You can go on our website and see, you know. If it's not recorded at the Registry, is that a stumbling block in trying to sell your house? Well, if, if you're a conveyancing attorney, yes, because, uh, you know, what happens is the uh, conveyancing attorney has to make a decision. And like anything, they don't want your problems to become their problems down the line. So most closing attorneys would say, hey, here are the mortgages that I found on record. You might have paid them off 20 years ago, but there's no discharge recorded. So please secure for me a discharge. It is great and an easy, easier task, I would say, if you're dealing with a local community bank and you just go down and you get good customer service. But some of the bigger banks who have put our economy, I think, in trouble the last few years. Some of them who just, uh, rules didn't apply to these institutions. In, in, in a smaller way, the same thing happened with the discharges. You know, mm -hmm. just, if someone paid off their mortgage, just get the discharge recorded. So, yes, it is a stumbling block. It's what a, a lawyer would say is a title issue. Mm -hmm. Not an insurmountable title issue. I don't want to worry people, but some but, banks... But nevertheless, it's a pain in the neck. And when I go on these uh, groups, Steve, and talk to the you know, senior centers or the rotaries or the lions, Invariably, someone will say, you know, when you mentioned discharges, I could see people glazing over, but I went through that. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's a title issue. It was a problem. It was very difficult to solve because I couldn't find out which bank, and then especially if it's a bigger bank, to get that customer service to, you know, to, to get someone to make the decision to give them the discharge. I think because of the various uh, you know, lawsuits and things that have gone on and, and the various scrutiny that the banking community has been put under, they have gotten a lot better about recording discharges. Mm -hmm. And I think the consumers are getting more uh, online. Uh, well, I think people in general are saying, well, wait a minute, it's my property. I better double check to make sure everything's being done. So if your discharge isn't recorded, it isn't an insurmountable problem, but it is a potential title problem. So I tell people, 
may as well get it straightened out when you're not under the gun of selling right. it mm -hmm. or you know, you're trying to refinance and the interest rates might be going up and your rate lock is expiring and suddenly you have a little title issue. So you, you don't want that. And title issues are no fun. I, my first house in Stoughton, when we went to sell it, there was a title issue. <laughs> and it had something to do with the attorney who had handled it at the time, an, an attorney who subsequently went on to become uh, White House Chief of Staff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we won't mention his name. Uh, <laughs> But you know it was a pain in the neck, and it, and, and and it was costly to get it rectified because he wanted us to pay him to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was it was crazy. You, you talked about office hours uh, in the in the counties. Uh, you you got office hours in every town in the county, right? Yes. Well, what we what we've done, um, you know, we go around to we we've we've held office hours at the town halls. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've held office office hours at community centers too, uh, but we go around. Uh, there's 28 communities in Norfolk County, uh, and we go around uh, to the communities. and And the the town halls have been great. We we had one at the Stoughton Town Hall, and we just rotate through and and uh, you get a lot of interesting. Uh, the citizens are great. A lot of them have challenging questions. A lot of them just looking for answers. You know, just or copies of of uh, documents, or some of them don't know if they have a homestead or they want to record a homestead. Some of the people who I mentioned, uh, and, and the beauty of our office hours is we, we, we set up our computers so we can look up all the records. Because when I first started as Registry of Deeds, when we did the office hours, you'd have to write everything down, just like I did with, you know, back in the days with Congressman Motley, and then go back and, 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 and take a look at, at and now things. you can do it with your telephone. Yeah, you, 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 can, you, you can get it done. So we do have office hours uh, throughout all the communities, and it saves people a trip. We, we, you know, we're out in Bellingham. Someone would say, hey, can, would you mind uh, re, you know, a discharge? I have it. They, you know, we take the filing fee, and we, we bring it back and we record it. So mm -hmm. it's a, just an, another uh, way of uh, doing customer service. And as part of our outreach, um, we, we speak at senior centers. We, I've, we've spoken to a uh, retired men's uh, group. Uh, we've we've spoke, speak to a lot of groups, the, mm -hmm. the Rotaries, the Lions. And, the and Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't believe there's a lot of it. There's a, the Holly Club in Rentham. You know, there's a lot of different <laughs> clubs and, 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 and th a lot of good service clubs. You know, there's a lot of people that do a lot of good and a lot of service. And You've also been good. out to the Stoughton Democratic Town Committee. I, I go. Uh, we, we, wherever we, you're we, asked. We, uh, we go wherever I was asked. In fact, in Stoughton, the Minerva uh, Club uh, a couple of Saturdays ago. Uh -huh. I, 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 There's a podium and a microphone. <laughs> well, and the beauty is, you know, well, you know, that's the price of admission I get. Really, they want the documents. I know that. Yeah. So we bring the computers in, and that's probably they probably get more uh, more out of that than more uh, out of me speaking. But uh, you talked about homesteads. Uh, now the law was changed a couple of years ago. Maybe you can tell us yeah. about, first of all, what's a homestead? What, what does it do for you? What does it do against you? Uh, sure. And, uh, and what did the law change? I think, I think it's a, that's a very important uh, part of law. And uh, it's been around a long time, but a lot, my, my, my father bought in Norway in 1960. He goes, well, I never put a homestead on. A homestead is a, it's, been, it's been written into the uh, law by the state legislature under Chapter 188. It allows the consumer uh, as long as it's your principal residence, to declare in a state of homestead. And what does that mean? Well, when you declare in a state of homestead, and I get into what, what, what it was prior to 2011, prior to 2011, you had to take a document and declare a homestead. And it's relatively uh, a simple form to fill out. If you bought your house, we'd look up the deed for you. It has a book and page on the registry side. If you're on the land court side, it has a certificate of title, or maybe you inherited it but you check off a box on how that property came into your name and you declare in a, a state of homestead. And it's been looked at by the legislature over a number of years, but even since I became registered in 2004, there was $300,000 worth of protection if you declare in a state of homestead. It was increased in 2004 to 500,000. And what it in essence does, Steve, is put a picket fence around your house. It prevents a forced sale of your principal residence to satisfy obligations. Now, does that include foreclosure on your mortgage? I was just going to get into that. Uh, I know everyone's playing poker. You know, uh, there are some. Uh, the, the homestead can beat some things, but the homestead cannot beat a mortgage. If you don't pay your mortgage, mm -hmm. the bank will foreclose on you. A homestead does not meet, beat the town of Stoughton. If you don't pay your taxes, they can take your property via tax title. 
But what the homestead does in some instances, uh, people might get into credit card debt and, and, and it'll have some type of judgment against them. Or uh, how about this? Uh, a lot of times uh, people cut down on the car insurance. You know, they might be retired on a fixed income, you know, mm -hmm. retired like you now, you know. And uh, what they do is they cut down on the insurance. They might only have $100,000 worth of car insurance, which sounds like a lot of money. Suddenly you hit somebody in the crosswalk and there's a, a $500,000 judgment against you. Well, the person that's advocating for the injured party is going to be looking to you to satisfy that judgment because they got the 100000 from the insurance company. So back to what I said at the beginning. For most of us, the house is the biggest asset we'll ever have. The homestead would protect your house. Mm -hmm. It's not going to, the creditors are still going to come after you, but it, it, it's another way of protecting your house. Uh, the state legislature sets our filing fees. It's a $36 filing fee. I think, um, I, I mentioned my, by way of training, I'm an attorney. Sometimes you talk to an attorney, you get 10 different opinions. But I think 9.9 .9 out of 10 attorneys would say you should have a homestead uh, recorded. So uh, that's in a nutshell what, what the homestead is. You have to refile once if you get a refinance? Well. And I, I did that, and, and I'll, uh, there was a change in the 2011 law, which, which was great. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there's a Massachusetts Registers of Deeds Association. We, we try to lobby the legislature, and then and you've got great local legislators who listen uh, here in Stoughton, and w it, where they did things like increasing it from 300000 uh, to 500000 one of the issues I saw, I saw it personally. I mean, uh, I, you know, um, I, I have three children. One's uh, just out of college, one's in college, one's a junior in high school. You know, you have tuitions. Well, I'm refinancing and I love my local community bank. I'm a community banking person. I'm like, can you cross this out? Because this language in here terminates my homestead. And uh, they have lawyers, oh, no, no, you know, they, you know the, the bureaucracy. Well, I so, know that any time we refinance, and we did several times to take advantage of the spiraling down yeah. rates, um, we had to cancel our homestead and then reinstate well, it. Well, and what, what I did uh, in, in my case as well is right after I refinanced, I, I put a homestead on because I didn't want a chance 20 years from now, some creditor, and hopefully I don't have any, but someone, you know, who knows what the future brings, saying, hey, 20 years ago when you refinanced, you killed your homestead in that little one-sentence clause the bank had. Mm -hmm. In 2011, the legislature responded to, to making, you know, people telling them about this issue, so now they put language in that if a bank has language like that in their mortgage, it does not terminate your homestead. It subordinates it to that mortgage, but it doesn't terminate it. Mm -hmm. So that was good news for the consumer. Uh, the other good news for the consumer in 2011 was a trust. If you have property in trust, uh, you can now declare an estate a homestead. The trustee can declare a homestead for the benefit, you know, uh, if say beneficiaries are living there as their principal residence. Now, you may want to check with who you did your estate planning with uh, because this was a new change because the prior case law uh, and in Norfolk County, I always took the homesteads. I was a big believer. People wanted to protect their property. I, mm -hmm. I, I understood. But there was case law that said on the land court side, if you held property in trust, the trust owned the property, not the individual. Therefore, you could not put a homestead on. So the legislature, again, responding, uh, I think, pro-consumer uh, is it helped by allowing for the first time on March 11, 2016, that uh, you could de declare an estate a homestead for a homestead. Does the new law affect people who already have homesteads on their home? The, 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 um, the practice in the past, for instance, if you had a valid homestead, and it went up to 500000 in 2004, it was 300000 mm -hmm. You didn't have to go record another homestead to get the benefit of that increase. That's been the past track record of the state legislature and uh, it continues to be. Uh, in the future, hopefully, they, maybe they'll increase it some more and, and uh, they will continue that. So you don't have to, to refile it. If you have a valid homestead, you get the benefit of the legislature in increasing it. Um, other, uh, one new benefit that took place March 11, 2016, the, the effective date of the legislation was, if you haven't done anything, if you haven't declared in a state of homestead, the legislature for the first time uh, gave uh, homestead protection to people that did not file a homestead. So mm -hmm. for the first time in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts history, we have an automatic homestead. 
The protection, however, is only 125,000 and it gets apportioned depending on who, how many people own the property. So to my way of thinking, for a $36 filing fee, I would rather have the $500,000 oh, worth of protection. Um, plus, um, uh, homestead protection, protection also applies to proceeds from the sale of a house for a limited period of time. So if you have a homestead and you sell your house, the credit is, it's, you know. Still can't touch that money. For one year, it's limited. Well, that's. But, but you, in the past, you know, they could swoop in. Yeah. If your house burnt down and you got a, a casualty insurance check so you could rebuild the house, again, if you have a homestead filed, it protects that house. Uh, again, in, in the proceeds while you build for two years. So there's, there's a lot of good in the homestead. It's a consumer law that many people might not be aware of. As register, I feel like we, you know, we try to you know, use forms like this to, to, to bring this information to the consumer and they could check with their attorneys or, or think about it um, or, or go online. You could go on our website and, and, and read a little bit about it or seek legal counsel, but it's something I think people should do. Phil, I want to thank you for uh You've just been a wealth of information, fascinating information, and, and almost everybody owns a home these days, and and, uh, and or a business, yeah. and uh, you know they, they, you, you've done a fine service oh, to the county. The, I, I want to let people know we're almost out of town, oh, so I want to let people know quick. where they can get in touch with you, uh, and there it is, the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds at 649 High Street in Dedham. Register Bill O'Donnell. Or William P. O'Donnell, <laughs> NorfolkDeeds.org, register O'Donnell at NorfolkDeeds.org, and the phone number, as you mentioned earlier, is 781-461-6101. Um, again, I want to thank you for coming on the show. We also want to thank Maxie's at Cobb's Corner. Uh, we call them mm, 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 Maxie's. And uh, you had you it had was lunch very here. good. Well, it was stuff, very huh? good. Excellent. Uh, they're in Cobb's Corner. <clears throat> when you go there, and I'm sure you will, because the food is just so darn good and the service is wonderful. Uh, make sure you say mm, 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 Maxie's <laughs> and uh, tell them you're sorry here on Community Forum. Uh, we've got a few messages for you. Uh, uh, Kids Day. We uh, we did a show on that earlier. Um, uh, Kids Day 2014, wet, wild, and wonderful. It's part of the uh, the uh, Independence Day celebration. June 28th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the high school on the carnival and fireworks display. Uh, July 3rd, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the high school. Uh, the July 4th parade is on. You heard it here first on, on Community Forum, and it is on. And uh, the specifics, the time, and, and details, and so forth, to be announced. For information, 7 one four three six zero three two three, or go to StoughtonCommunityEvents.org. Comedy meets rock and roll presents comedian Steve Sweeney. Another former guest uh, on on our show is Joe Kidd, who is running this. Uh, the music is by Rocksteady, Michelle Romero, and Joe Kidd. Uh, it's on Saturday, June 21st from 7 to 10 at the Stoughton High School Auditorium. Uh, you can, uh, general admission is only $20 a person. It's going to be a great show for that price. To benefit the Special Education Department, advanced tickets, uh, you can call ACE Ticket. Uh, the show information for local ticket sales is 774-259-9809. Uh, uh, and they are a united group and they will have concessions uh, at the event. Give pints for half pints. Sherm's sixth annual blood drive for Children's Hospital and Memory of Fran Stetson, hosted by Sherm's Auto Body in Stoughton, Sunday, June 1st, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, breakfast and lunch will be served, uh, and uh, it's, it's at the uh, uh, St. John uh, Philharmonic Society Club, which is right next to the VFW, uh, at 845 Washington Street, Route 138 in Stoughton. Uncorked, a unique wine tasting event. Pop a cork with a gorilla at the Franklin Park Zoo, Saturday, May 31st, uh, which is coming up real soon. 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Tickets, $45 a person, available at zoonewengland.org. By the way, you don't have to dial the www anymore. You don't have to print that on your computer. It'll automatically add it for you. American Cancer Society looking for volunteers to drive cancer patients to and from treatment. 1-800-ACS-6662 or cancer.org. Ilsa Marks Food Pantry at 51 and St. Anthony's Free Market, uh, Two Park Avenue in Stoughton. For more information, call Christine Gallery. They need help not only in donating food, but also in donating help. 
your, your, your help in, in stocking, in, in taking care of patrons, and so forth. 3410611 or 3410549, both 781 areas. Ask for Jester at Meals on Wheels, and if you can volunteer as little as an hour a week, uh, helping to deliver hot meals and warm conversation to uh, sh uh, shut-ins in Stoughton. 781-344-8882, extension 2. Uh, Stoughton Penny Saver, we thank them for their help in, in uh, publicizing the show, and we suggest to you that if you've got a business, advertise it in the Penny Saver because it works. It works very well, and it also works very well for political campaigns. I know we've used the Penny Saver over the years many, many times and had excellent results. And the International Forum Show, which is uh, interviews guests with local groups uh, throughout the world via Skype. Uh, it's, on, it's on Sundays at 8.30 p.m., Mondays at 11, Wednesdays at 9, Thursdays at 9.30, and Saturday at noon. It's uh, here on your uh, Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 28, uh, your SMAC stations, International Forum at Yahoo.com, 760-6991. And Stoughton Farmers Market is coming up very soon. It's going to be at the First Parish Universal Church, right in the center of town, 790 Washington Street. It is, uh, I think it's going to be on Saturdays, 10 to 2. It's a non-profit, volunteer-run, local farmers market. It's Stoughton's own farmers market. Starts June 14th and goes through October 25th, rain or shine, every Saturday. Uh, and uh, there will be a number of, of, of organizations there. They're still in the process of, of, of bringing in participants. So don't miss the farmer's market, and don't mistake the other farmer's market that, that's near Stoughton uh, for this one. This is the one. And the Community Forum Show, our show is on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 6, Mondays at 8, Tuesdays at 5, on the same SMAC channels, Comcast 9 and Verizon 28. If you have comments and suggestions, send them to communityforum1 at yahoo.com. In Easton, the show times are Mondays at 9, Tuesdays at 8, Wednesdays at 3, Saturdays at 10, and uh, same channel, same uh, uh, email address. And what we usually do at the end of uh, any show that I do, um, we have thought for the week. And we usually try to tie it into whatever our guest is, uh, is about. This one comes from Jack Liu, who uh, is United States uh, Secretary of the Treasury and former White House Chief of Staff, a biggie. And he said, I think there's no higher calling in terms of a career than public service, which is a chance to make a difference in people's lives and improve the world. And I gotta say, you know, I've known you for a long time. You are uh, uh, typical of that particular statement. That, that is exactly what seems to be motivating you. Certainly, it's not because you make a lot of money. Well, uh, you, you seem to be you. motivated by the desire to do good, and you've done a great deal of it in, in, in a, a variety of aspects. And uh, once again, thank you for well, well, coming to our show. You thank much. you for your service to our community, our county, and our state. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Well, thank you very much. As I, I learned when I was a kid from my dad, if you're going to do something, do it right. <laughs> and thank you very much for watching our program. We will see you again uh, next time. My name is Steve Fradkin. You've been watching Community Forum. And good day to you.